Okay, in this problem we want to figure out the relationship between these two molecules. And first you want to make sure that you know, they're, they are some sort of isomers of one another or identical. Um, but if you look at you know, this first carbon, it's bonded to the bromine, methyl, and hydrogen. Same thing here, bromine, methyl, hydrogen. Bottom carbon, fluorine, methyl, hydrogen. Fluorine, methyl, hydrogen. So these two are either identical and they're just uh, different conformations or they're a form of stereoisomer. The best way to compare these is by doing some manipulations to get the main backbone the same in both. And, you know, to not make too much work for yourself, let's just stick with one. And, you know, I like the main planar portion of the molecule and this one on the left. So we have hydrogen, carbon, carbon, hydrogen. Okay, so what we want to do in order to make a comparison between these two is to get that planar portion of the second molecule to also be the hydrogen, carbon, carbon, hydrogen. So in order to do that, we need to rotate some groups around. Let's start on the top carbon, the one on the right, and we want hydrogen in the plane, so let's rotate it to here, bromine back, and the methyl to the out position. All right, let's draw what we get. Okay, at uh, the bottom portion of the molecule, we didn't manipulate it yet, so keep it the same. But on the top, we've moved the hydrogen into the plane. We've moved the bromine back and the methyl out. So we've done that manipulation. All right, so here's our hydrogen. Hydrogen, we're still not where we can make a good comparison. So now we need to rotate the bottom carbon to put hydrogen into the plane. So let's rotate these three groups around. Move the hydrogen to here, the methyl back, and the fluorine out. Let's draw this one. Now, in this case, the top stays the same. We didn't change it. Okay, but we put the hydrogen into the plane, fluorine out, and the methyl's back. Now we can make a direct comparison because our planar groups right here match the first compound. So now let's investigate each of our chiral centers. And our chiral center here, we have the bromine out and the methyl back. Well, in this molecule, it's inverted. The bromine's back and the methyl's out. Our second chiral center has the fluorine out and the methyl back. And in the other compound, it stays the same. So one chiral center stayed the same, one was inverted. All right, that means we have a pair of non-superimposable, non-mirror images, which gives us a pair of diastereomers. Okay, if they were enantiomers, both chiral centers would have had to be inverted. 